Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a super massive ginormous end of year art supply haul. Let me add a bit of fine print before we get into this juicy art supply haul. Uh, first of all, I am drinking coffee. It is very early in the morning. I am attempting to film this uh, before my toddler is up and running around like a banshee and making a ton of noise. But the fine print, let's get to the fine print. First of all, know that, you know, this is my job, like being an artist and having materials that I am using to make art is part of my job. So I never want people to feel this pressure uh, that you need all of these things to make art because you don't, okay? Um, a lot of this also is stuff that I've been accumulating over a couple of months now. So this is not just, this was not one big giant purchase. This is things that I've bought over a couple of months, I'd say. So I've put them all together to kind of show you like, here's my recent purchases to, to share. Something else that I do is that towards the end of the year, I always, you know, I have a big shop sale at the end of the year and I take kind of part of that money and put it back into my business and restock art supplies that I really love from the year. So a couple of these things are just things that I already use and I'm out of that I needed to restock. Um, I also kind of would like treat myself a little bit um, by allowing myself to have a little bit of expenses to basically you know, treat myself and purchase some art supplies that maybe I've had my eye on or something new or also projects for the upcoming year. A number of these things, I'm looking at like this little printer guy and even these big sketchbooks over here, they're for projects that I'm working on for the upcoming year. So I'm kind of trying to get myself ready and geared up for that. Um, also in this batch, I've included a couple of Etsy shop purchases. There's some things that I got, um, like I got some stickers from Lee Ellickson and I also have... Um, stickers from, uh, I can't remember, Little Bujo stickers, I think is what the shop is called, um, for my Hobonichi. So there's a couple like Hobonichi related things here for when I go to start my new planner for 2022. So weird saying that, oh my gosh. But anywho, I love watching art supply hauls, so that's why I wanted to kind of gather up my stuff and share it with you. So let's go through all of the goods. I'm gonna make a pile off to the side and we can just work our way through. I don't know how I'm gonna organize these. Maybe we'll do it largest to, I don't know, or maybe I'll do, let me separate like things that I have restocked for myself, planner journaling things. Yeah, because I do have a number of restock things. New things I'm going to try. We'll make a new new things pile, sketchbooks. Some of the stuff I haven't even opened yet because I've just have not had a chance. So uh, let me get myself situated here. And we're back with coffee. Sorry, I'm not on like a cute mat or anything like that. It's just easiest for me to film on my little white mat. So that's that's what you're getting today. Let's start with some restocks. Uh, a restock of mine is some black ink. I use black acrylic ink all the time in my work. Obviously, it's how I do all of my outlining with a detail brush. And I will say I have over the years have begun to narrow down my favorite kinds of black acrylic ink. Uh, one of which is the Dale Rowney, the FW acrylic ink. I really like this one a lot. Um, another one that I really love is the Sennelier abstract acrylic ink. I am in like my last drops of this. Like I literally use them as uh, all the way down to the bottom. Um, and the only, the only black I had left was the Liquitex acrylic inks, which I do love the Liquitex acrylic inks, but I do not like the black one. Um, for outlining. I actually find that the Daler Rowney ink, or again, this the Abstract Sennelier ink is my favorite. It's just hard to find these bottles individually. They usually come in like sets with primary colors. I have found that this is a lot darker and the Sennelier is a lot darker than the Liquitex Black as far as outlining goes. So I did re-up uh, a bottle for myself because I'm almost out of that one. I think Peach Tober is what finished me off really as far as my black ink. So I always need that. That is definitely a big, a big restock for me. Another restock for me is some paint brushes, which I really need. And for many years, I would say I have always been a more budget uh, paintbrush gal but I have noticed that I have started to take better care of my nicer brushes. Uh, therefore, I am kind of treating myself to, to, nicer, to nicer brushes. I just find that it's nicer, obviously, for illustrative kind of detail work. And again, I, I've, I've found myself taking care of my brushes. Therefore, I think that it is worthy of me 
you know, investing in nicer brushes that I work with all the time. You know, this is a tool that I use every day. So it's worth investing into it if you take care of it. For the longest time, I was someone who just let their paintbrushes sit in water for a thousand years. Like I would just all day, I would just leave brushes in there. And I don't do that anymore. I always make the effort to clean them after every session. I have the little paintbrush cleaner conditioner that I use all the time. I will periodically do a deep clean of my brushes, um, which if you want a paintbrush deep clean video, uh, let me know. I can show you how I do that from how I learned how to do that from art school. I do that periodically. So I do take good care of my brushes. So I felt that, you know, it warranted purchasing a nice set. Most of my nicer brushes, I will admit, have come from art snacks or art snacks boxes. Over time, I have found that I really love these Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. The brushes are really good quality. I love them for watercolor. I love them for um, acrylic, for gouache. They work for all, all kinds of different media, which I really love. But I particularly love the feel of the handle. The handle feels really nice. It has this like matte sort of texture. I guess that's the velvet touch part of it, I, you would say. Um, and it's just become one of my favorite brushes to use. I just really, really like them. I think Princeton brushes in general have become kind of one of my go-to. Like I'm reaching over here. I have like my little detailer that I use is also a Princeton brush. Um, I just really like Princeton brushes. So rather than just buying solo individual ones, I went ahead and I bought a set um, especially just to get the two round detail, which is what I use for uh, my black line detailing. Um, and I even like this size eight round is really nice for watercolor work. So I wanted to get the little assortment. I felt like it was time to invest in some nicer brushes. So there is that. I will, by the way, try to link everything down below. Um, anything that is gonna be from Amazon is going to be an affiliate link out of my storefront, just for full transparency. Okay, let's talk about these markers. I Someone sent me these, these Recollections opaque paint pens. Someone sent me a set of these, uh, oh gosh, over a year ago, maybe even two years ago, and was like, hey, I found these, they're amazing, check them out. And I used them and I freaking love them. I would say that they're comparable to a, the Jane Davenport paint pens. It's like a Jane Davenport pen dupe. But what is so cool with these is that they come in a bunch of different colors. Now, the bummer, this is a Michaels brand. I feel like this has been like a secret, these pens, and I'm about to like fill you in on a big secret here. But I don't want to gatekeep art supplies because I think that that's also kind of silly. I freaking love these pens so much. Uh, it is a Michaels brand. Okay, these are definitely like my favorite paint pens, but Michaels does not make them anymore in this giant set and in all of the colors. They do sell individual ones, um, and it's like a pink, it's like the bright pink, the light pink, um, a blue color, and a white. Oddly, the same colors that also comes in the Jane Davenport single paint pens. So I don't know if they're trying to like compete with Jane Davenport. I'm not really sure. Those are the single ones that you can buy. You can buy them on michaels.com or in store. They usually have like a pen area, like a pen bar area where you can kind of pick things out, but they don't make this big set anymore with all of the colors. After I learned that, um, and I was like, I was trying to find them at Michaels and I was like, where, where are these pens? What the heck? And they weren't online. And that's when I learned that they don't make them anymore. So I tracked this down on Mercari and bought it off of somebody. So this was like an eBay style purchase, but for me, well worth it because I'm trying to hoard these pens and track them down. And I was like having panic that I wasn't going to have these pens anymore if I burn through all of my other ones. Cause there's some of them that I love the colors, like this light blue color I am obsessed with, this pastel purple, um, this dark blue, I just, oh, this, the red is really fun. Like, I just love these pens so much. So uh, this was sort of a panic purchase of trying to get my paws on these before they're gone forever, basically. I think that about does it for my restocks. Although I did decide in one of my restock purchases, something that I needed to get, but I decided to mix it up a little bit. I love using the double-ended red and blue uh, Mitsubishi pencils. They usually come in a box like this. I burn through these really fast. This is my number one sketching tool that I use in my sketchbook. I think a lot of us by this point use these. Um, and I prefer these over 
um, what's the other thing that people really like that I'm spacing on? The erasable colored pencils that I, oh gosh, you guys are gonna come for me in the comments. I cannot remember. I can't remember what it is. The erasable colored pencils, I don't like those. I don't think they're pigmented enough, probably because they're erasable. I really like this because it just feels like a creamy colored pencil. These are not erasable, which is fine. I, I'm quite, I actually like sketching and not having the option to erase. I wanted to mix it up this time around and try something different. So I went ahead and picked up the Ticonderoga in red and they are erasable, which is interesting. So I'm wondering if they're gonna be like those other ones. Coal erase, that's what I'm thinking of, the coal erase pencils. I hate those. I, I got some a long time ago, tried them, hated them. I'm hoping this isn't like that but I don't know. I wanted to at least give it a try and try something a little bit different. Obviously, I'm not gonna try these things in this video, but oh look, they come sharpened. Look at that. Carmine Red and apparently erasable. I love Ticonderogas, the number twos, softs. Maybe this will be comparable to that. I, I don't know, but this is in my experiment with something new pile. We'll see how that goes. Something else I wanted to experiment with was a new uh, black, pen so i went ahead and grabbed this three pack of the sakura pigmas uh, they're professional brush pens it comes with a fine a medium and a bigger brush pen i'm assuming these are probably comparable to pit pens but i haven't tried them so i wanted to give it a go i think actually these two i was influenced by someone else's art supply video which i cannot for the life of me remember what it is if i remember if I remember it, I will put it down in the description box below. That is what inspired these two. It was like, I saw someone else had them and I was like, oh, this is kind of interesting. And so I just put it in my Amazon list. And then when I was making up the things, I you know, pulled the trigger and went ahead and bought them. So these are new to me. I have not tried these. The barrel of the body looks nice, of the, of the, of the pen looks nice. Um, I also trust Sakura as well. They usually make really good products. So I'm excited to give this a go as well. Um, and see. I also just kind of got into using more flexible nib brush pens a little bit more. Not like not like um, not like a Pentel pocket brush pen. I actually hate that pen, but I was using something else. I think it was another Sakura pen actually quite a bit. So I wanted to add more and experiment with something else as well. Okay, let's delve into oh, as my coffee spills. Let's delve into the wild world of watercolor over here. Oh, and what a wild world! It is, I'm trying to move things out of the way here. Um, okay, so backstory on watercolor. I purchase usually individual tubes of watercolor, just one-off things. I've also accumulated a number of random one-off tubes from art snacks over the years. So I just never really felt the need to like build a true palette. I also am so grateful and blessed from my patrons and some of you guys on the internet. You often send me samples of watercolors. You guys will send like literally, let me see if I have it here. I have an entire tray that someone sent me, someone sent me this, just to sample and experiment with different watercolors. And this has been my go-to watercolor stuff. Like my watercolor supply stash has just been little samples that people send me. I also have like little Altoid tins, um, other little ones that just people send me stuff. And that's how I have used watercolor over the years. So I've never actually sat down and built my own custom watercolor palette. And now that I've been using these little samples over the years, I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's like been like three years of me using these samples. Now that I've been using these samples for many, many years, I feel like now I can actually invest in building my own watercolor palette because I've experimented with a lot of different brands and colors and all that. So that is one of my kind of little goals that I goals slash projects that I wanted to do moving into the new year was build like my perfect watercolor palette. I think it's also a video that I want to create for Patreon too, like finally building my watercolor palette of my dreams. Um, so that is what these next couple purchases are, is me working towards building that. So first up, I went ahead and invested, whew, invested is the key word on this, in some Daniel Smith watercolor. Rather than getting individual tubes, I went ahead and found this particular set. There's lots of different 
curated Daniel Smith sets based on subject matter. There's specific artists that curate ones as well. But I went ahead for this one because it had a number of the colors that I was already after. These greens, this sort of like purpley blues here, um, this yellow. There's a lot in here that I knew I wanted to grab. Um, yeah, it's got opera pink. It's got moon glow, the infamous moon glow, right? We all love that. The undersea green, the lunar blue. A lot of these are, are in that sample palette that I have been using that, again, someone so generously sent my way that I'm actually like I'm hitting pan on. You know what I mean? Like I'm at the bottom of it. So I really did need to, okay, if, I'm, if I want these colors, I need to just commit and buy the tubes already. So this was the set that I went for. Um, again, trying to look at all of them in here. Look at all these little babies. Oh my God. It, it is like insane how expensive watercolor is, like good watercolor. But at the same time, it's worth it for nice quality paints that you use a lot. And I use these quite a bit. I use my watercolors quite a lot. So um, I'm excited to break into that and start to build my, my palette. Uh, something else I went ahead and purchased was the uh, six set of the core watercolors. These are the high chroma ones. Let me see if I have my, let me get my spooky scissors to get this out of the plastic here. Um, same story here. Uh, the core watercolors, they're made, it's made by Golden. This is basically Golden's watercolors. Very high end, beautiful, vibrant um, paints. Um, and they have a number of different set combinations of colors. I went ahead with this one, which was called the, the High Chroma set. Again, because it had colors that I knew I was going to be using. Um, yeah, like the green gold. I love the green gold. Uh, this, their quinacridone magenta, I really love. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, this other gold in here. There's a lot of colors that I really like to use out of this set. I love this tin. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. Well, I'm definitely gonna reuse this tin, that's for sure. So I got the little nice nice little six, six set here. I'm excited to delve into those. Again, slowly working on building, building my perfect, my perfect palette here. I'm trying to keep these in the boxes a little bit just because that is gonna be part of a separate video. Um, along with that, I did go ahead and get um, a new pan to try. I haven't even opened this. I wanted to pick out again. I'm trying to trying to build, trying to build my perfect palette. This was just something simple that was on Amazon, and I think it actually came with these. So that is what this is. It came with a bunch of the little the little half pans. But I liked the shape of this. Ooh, I liked the shape of this a lot. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to build build a palette. I like more narrow things like this. I'm probably going to cover this with stickers, let's be honest, but I liked the the color in that as well. Okay, next up we have some sketchbooks, a little bit of a sketchbook haul happening here. Um, I needed some new sketchbooks, A, because I am nearly done with a number of them. I work in a lot of sketchbooks at one time, so um, the ones that I'm currently working in, I'm, I'm nearly done. I actually think I'm going to have like two Two of them are almost done, so it's like I need to replace those with something else. So um, I picked up two favorites and a new one to myself. Um, another reason why I wanted to grab some new sketchbooks is that I am starting a sketchbook club over on Patreon as part of the All Access tier. We've been doing a comic book club on that tier, but we're switching it, switching things up. And starting in the new year, we are doing a sketchbook club. And the goal is to have a sketchbook and finish it, fill it up completely by the end of the year. So that said, I wanted to have a sketchbook that is specific to that sketchbook club um, because part of the project too, or it's it's almost like a class kind of in a, in a sense, um, is that there's gonna be monthly sketchbook videos, but basically I'm only documenting that sketchbook on Patreon. So I needed a specific sketchbook for that that I'm not using for anything else. I went ahead and grabbed the Strathmore Mixed Media. Uh, this is an, an old favorite. I usually get the smaller ones, but I went ahead and got the bigger one. I'm pretty sure this is the one that I'm going to use for Sketchbook Club, but I'm not sure yet. Um, the paper is really great. It is the soft cover. The soft cover tends to lay a little bit more flat, I think, than the hardcover ones do. I do have a hardcover one though, and I actually, I do like it as well. Um, 
Let me talk about this one next. This next one is the Moleskin Plain Notebook, the classic. This is what I call my off-camera crinkle, and I'm looking to see if I have it by me, and I don't. Um, I have like a pastel purple one that I use all the time. Um, I would not recommend this as like an actual day-to-day -day functional sketchbook because the paper is actually terrible for mixed media stuff. It's fine if you do pencils and maybe like fine liners, but that's one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it immediately takes some of the pressure off. Like I like having just a crappy sketchbook that I do put paint in and ink in and it bleeds through and it makes weird textures and it gets super crinkly, which I love. Um, it makes it just, it immediately turns it into a no pressure fun space to make art and preliminary drawings for things. So, and, and it started as well as like, this is my sketchbook that I'm going to use off camera and the paper gets really crinkly. So I turned, I called it my off camera crinkle. It has become one of my favorite sketchbooks. I'm plowing through it. It's nearly done. And there's a lot of pages in these moleskin ones. Um, so I grabbed this thinking maybe I'll do it for sketchbook club, but I don't, I don't think I am because I think I can demonstrate more techniques on the mixed media paper. But I wanted to get a backup because I'm nearly done with my current off-camera crinkle. And this green is just so great, this like pea barf green. I did grab a new to me sketchbook. I have not tried one of these. This is the Stillman and Byrne uh, mixed media sketchbook, soft cover. Um, I'm assuming this is probably comparable to the Strathmore mixed media, but I don't know. Um, this is something that I'm going to open up and test uh, as part of my sketchbook club videos. So I'm kind of saving it for that. But I picked it up to give it a try just to, you know, just to try something different. Dante has broken into my studio now and he is in here. Oh my goodness. So if you hear dog noises, it's it's Dante below. All right, next up are a couple of what I would call planner journal with me purchases. Uh, the first one, and I'm very excited about this little guy. Um, I use a Canon Ivy to print little photographs in my planner journal, which is basically my Hobonichi where I collage and have like journal entries, but it's also like my day-to-day -day, like weekly planner, my to-do lists, my goals, like my whole life is in my Hobonichi. Um, all of those videos are on Patreon. I never do them on YouTube because it is more personal because um, there's personal photographs and like it's more of like a journal. It's very journaly and it's like a junk journal as well, I would say. Um, but those videos are over on Patreon and they're real time sessions. They're like hour long videos. Like I'm not joking. They're, they're massive. So I've gotten very into using my Hobonichi this year. So I wanted to kind of treat myself with some new things as I embark on to my 2022 Hobonichi, which I think you guys saw in my last unboxing. Um, and I even have a new cover for it for this upcoming year. I'm so excited. Ah! Okay, so usually I use the Canon Ivy for my photos, which I definitely am still going to use. Um, but the sticker paper that I use on that is pretty chonky because it does print like a traditional kind of fo like full color photo. So it does beef up your book a little bit. So I wanted to try something a little bit different and I wanted to get one of these ones, which is the, um, God, what are these actually called? It's a mini printer, but it prints on like the paper. It's, um, oh God, it's like thermal paper. It's like a little mini thermal printer. I wanted to try something different. This was like a gift set. Look at this. It's like a little box. Isn't this cute? Um, but I love the idea of just printing like carefree, pictures and lists and random things off of my phone that wouldn't be super chunky and take up as much space. Also, it's this is like a cheaper alternative as far as like printing out my own little things because you're going to get way more out of a roll of thermal paper than you would, let's say, a pack of 10 photos for the Ivy because I think the Canon Ivy photos, they work out to being like a dollar a print. So I'm usually a little bit more selective when I go to print <laughs> those photos. So I just want to try something different. Um, this was like a gift set option. They do just sell the printers on their own, but the gift set came with three different types of paper rolls. Like one of these is like transparent paper, one semi-transparent, and then one is just regular white paper. So rather than buying the paper separately, I figured let me get the gift set so I can experiment with a little bit of everything. I'm going to save the rest of this unboxing for a planner journal with me on Patreon, but just wanted to show you uh, kind of why I bought that and what it looks like. 
All right, last and certainly not least, I have two little Etsy shop purchases. First is from a shop called Little Bujo Stickers. I haven't even opened this, you guys. This is really exciting. I definitely am gonna have to save this little guy. Um, ah, Coco! Ugh. Oh my God, I love Coco. How am I gonna preserve this sticker? Oh God. Um, this is specifically for my Hobonichi. I got these. Let's see. It took a while for this to get here. I think this shop is located in Turkey, apparently. But um, I'm sure, like myself, you have all gotten back into Animal Crossing, those of you who play with that big, juicy, beautiful update that happened. Um, I got really hot back on to playing Animal Crossing, and I wanted to put some cute stuff in my planner journal. How cute. Look at this tissue paper. Oh, it's not even tissue. It's like vellum paper. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. There is the shop, Little Bujo stickers. So cute. But they had really, really cute. Ah, I need to try to save all this stuff. This is the stuff that I save and I put into my planner journal as like junk journal stuff. Oh, okay, I can't save it. It's not happening. Oh, look at all these little tissue paper stars. How cute. Anyways, I got super back into Animal Crossing and decided to get some cute little stickers to put into my planner journal. How cute are these? I can't, oh my God, this is so cute. I wanted some of these to collage onto my new cover and even just to put into my Animal Crossing spreads. I have a number of just Animal Crossing specific spreads in my planner journal, but I went ahead and got the little, the little heads. So, look at Celeste, that is so cute. They're like really nice like matte stickers. I got the buildings. Oh my God, it's so cute. Oh, and then I forgot I got Christmassy ones. I got this like washi sampler. I thought this was really cute. You can tell that these are like printed at home, but they're still really nice though for various little holiday spreads. Oh yeah, and then I got this little like celestial moon cosmic one, which I also think is really cute. So these are all planner journal things. Oh, freebies, what's this? How cute! Oh my God! How cute! There's a bunch of just little like sticker flakes of things. Oh, how cute! I love the little Animal Crossing fruits. That's so cute. I have a peach island, by the way. What's your island? Tell me down below. And then I also picked up a little charm to add to my cover because I just thought it would be really cute. A little Celeste. Eee! Oh my God, this is so cute. Oh, it's glittery too. Oh my God, this is so cute. I just, I have never put charms on my planner and I decided that this was the year I'm going to start putting charmy things on my planner. That is so cute. I wish I had bought more. It actually has a little bit of glitter on the inside of it too. Oh my God, that's so cute. That like made my morning. That was a really fun little unboxing. Okay, uh, last but not least, we are now at uh, Lee Ellickson. She had a big shop update, so I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of stickers. Again, mainly for my planner journal. Ugh. Hold on, I might need to change my battery and get scissors to open this, BRB. Okay, and we're back. Let's take a look. Oh, I forgot I got a drink water thing too. Oh gosh, I just, I ordered this stuff and then I just put it off to the side and I literally completely forgot what I even ordered. Um, cute, we've got the little thank you for your order with all of her info. Look at little Toadie, that's so cute. Love, I actually think I have this. I think I have this print already, I don't know, but I will add it to my collection, to my wall. And then, I picked up, I love the ghost sticker. Uh, this guy's my favorite. I had to get two of these because um, I want to put one on my planner journal cover. The other one I can just hoard or put onto my new sketchbook club sketchbook maybe. That's probably what I'll end up doing. Had to get the I'm Stinky Toad. These stickers are big, they're really nice. Little rainbow and the little still life. I loved this one. And then of course the drink water, which I am a terrible water drinker terrible. I'm very excited about this. This is very cool. Oh my gosh, that was so fun to open. What a fun little Etsy haul. Um, I will say, you know, shop small this holiday season if you haven't already, because it's just fun. It's just fun opening up Etsy stuff. 
All right, let me see if I can try to get all this back in frame here for the grand finale. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get, okay. Well, I've tried to shove everything back into the shot here for the final like flat lay. It's a looking a little chaotic, but I think you get the, the gist here. Um, anywho, links for everything will be down below. Um, again, never any pressure to buy art supplies, guys. Really, like you'd be amazed with how much you can actually create with the bare minimum. It's just, this is, again, this is what I do. I need supplies to create. As you can see, a lot of these were really project specific. Uh, a lot of them were kind of just re-upping my own supplies and some of them were even just, you know, supporting other artists and small shops that I also just really love. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this ginormous art supply haul. I know I love watching art supply hauls, so I hope this was at least borderline entertaining for you. Uh, if you are new here, feel free to subscribe. I've got some new videos in the works for the new year. Um, and of course, if you are uh, interested in supporting me further and looking for more videos, there is a link also down below to my Patreon where I post loads of new content there all the time, uh, including our little comic book club starting up in the new year. Excited for that. Anywho, thank you again for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.